We hope that our experience inspires other IMGs because in the end, it will all be worth it. Hi everyone! Welcome back to our vlog. I'm Mark. And I'm Maurice. And for this vlog, we will tell you all about our job hunting experience as we applied for resident medical officer positions in Australia. We have successfully been offered a job as a PGY2 resident medical officer in the same hospital. We feel really grateful and honored and now we want to share our experience with you as well as our tips that we believe will help you. In our previous vlog, we talked about our interview experience as well as the tips that we learned from other people. So if you are yet to secure a position, make sure to check out that too. To recap, we took our AMC MCQ exam last 2022. And as soon as the results came out, we immediately applied for a lot of RMO positions all over Australia. And as we have mentioned before, we already have our valid English test because we originally wanted to take the P-Lab route to UK. As you know, in the P-Lab route, you would need a valid English exam result first before you book the P-Lab one. Anyway, we will talk about why we switched to the AMC route maybe in another video. For this video, the first thing that we will talk about is our job hunting experience. Honestly, the experience has been quite nerve-wracking because every day we were checking job sites and then we were sending out applications and it took a lot of applications to even secure an interview. As you all know, we only have finished the AMC MCQ and yet to take the AMC clinicals. We graduated last 2019 and we are currently working overseas as we do not have any working rights in Australia yet. So those factors are an added challenge because definitely employers would prefer candidates who are already registered or who have completed both the AMC MCQ and the AMC clinicals, who have current uh, working rights in Australia, or even those who have more years of experience. So definitely the chances of being shortlisted in an interview increases in those scenarios. If you have completed the AMC MCQ or are planning to take the exam very soon, you may be wondering, should I start applying with AMC MCQ only? In our own opinion, you should definitely do so. You could do it while studying for the AMC clinicals. It is definitely possible to get hired even if with an AMC 1 and a valid English test only, especially with the hospitals who are short staffed. Um, applying is free, so you could apply as much as you can. During our job hunting, there were times where we felt hopeless whenever we got rejections. Plus, sending out applications can be quite tiring since you have to prepare your CV, which you should continuously update, your answers to the selection criteria, which would depend on the hospital that you are applying for, as well as your cover letter, which you should tailor to the hospital that you are applying for. Also, there were times when we considered taking the AMC clinicals to boost our chances of getting a job in Australia. But at the same time, we know that the AMC clinicals would take at least six months of preparation. The exam itself and the review center is expensive. Other people have also told us that if you have previously worked in an Australian healthcare system, uh, the AMC clinicals would be a lot easier. In the end, despite the many sent out applications with rejections and mostly with no responses at all, we decided to just power through and keep sending out applications and having faith that eventually we would get hired. A lot of people have also told us that Australia does need a lot more doctors. So we really just did our best to apply while also working full time in our home country. Depending on the hospital, it would take us a maximum of two to three days uh, to finish an application because some answers require to be in essay form which we could only do once we get home from our current jobs. So for months, that's what we did. It was a tiresome and a nerve-wracking experience. But please, don't lose hope. Keep on applying and improving your application like we did and soon enough you will land an interview. We actually lost count of how many applications we have sent out because it was really a lot. But you know, in the end, when we least expected it, we landed an interview. Remember that you only need one interview to be matched, so keep doing your best. We hope that our experience inspires other IMGs because in the end, it will all be worth it. 
Now we will share tips based from our job hunting experience which we hope could help make your job hunting easier. For our first tip, for the CV format, you can use the APRA CV format which you can see in their website. It includes your personal information, any qualifications you have obtained, um, bridging programs you have participated in or qualifying examinations. It also includes um, any clinical and procedural skills that you have observed or are competent in, your work history, your registration history, any publications you have made, and the contact information of your references. It would be best to include a supervisor who has handled you in the past 12 months. And then at the end, you have to place your verification statement, including your signature and the date signed. As you apply, make sure to continuously edit and improve your CV. It might be also wise to let other people check your CV. It might also be helpful to update your LinkedIn profile as other employers check that. Some states also provide their own CV format, so make sure to use that. Second tip, as much as possible, tailor every application. Emphasize on your CV, the skills and experiences the position is looking for. For example, if you are applying for a RMO position, make sure to emphasize on your hospital experience. And if you are applying for a GP position, make sure to emphasize on your CV, the clinical experiences. Make sure also to tailor your cover letter to the hospital and keep it to one page only. Lastly, provide meaningful answers to the selection criteria, and this would depend on the hospital that you are applying for. Give two to three concrete examples for each. You can also use the STAR format, which we have discussed in our interview blog. Third tip, check job sites regularly. Job sites that we applied to are Seek, Indeed, Jora, and even LinkedIn. We turned on email notifications for RMO positions in Australia so that it would be easier to check new listings because we can just check our emails every day. You can also apply directly to the hospitals. You could check their contact details in their website. But in our case, we did not apply directly. We just check the ads that they post in the job sites. Take note as well if you are applying for rotational positions because if you are working towards a general registration just like us, you would need minimum of 10 weeks in medicine, 10 weeks in surgery, and 8 weeks in the ED with a total of 47 weeks. Fourth tip, try to aim for hospitals with the work-based assessment program if you have only finished the AMC one WBA is the workplace-based assessment program which you can take in place of the AMC clinicals. It is being offered only to selected hospitals which you can check in their website in the APRA. We have learned that the WBA has a higher passing rate than the AMC clinicals. Plus, we think that hospitals with the WBA provides more opportunities for doctors who are applying with limited registration only. Fifth tip, keep a job application tracker, which was what we did. We believed it helped keep our application statuses organized. With the many applications that we sent out, um, sometimes we lost track whether or not we have already applied to the hospital or sometimes we lost track of the link from that specific job ad. So it is very helpful and it looks like this. So we placed the ad there and then we placed a drop-down box to if we have already applied or have been interviewed, etc. And then we also placed a drop-down box if the ad says that they are accepting those eligible for limited registration. And of course, we also placed the link. We actually started this late because at first we didn't realize that we would lose track of all the applications. Sixth tip. Watch out for the campaign period, especially for the starting and closing date. There are three rounds actually in each campaign period, so make sure to check each state's website. But still, you could apply all year round because there are unfilled positions in some hospitals. We personally got hired during the campaign period, and that's when hospitals hire the most. Seventh tip. 
you can apply as much as you want as there is no additional fee every time you send out an application. But for us, we focus our energy on applying to job ads which state eligible for limited registration since we were also busy working full time. A typical ad looks like this. And if you scroll down to the eligibility criteria, you would uh, see if they have stated eligible for limited registration. It is better to send out as many applications as you can, uh, but make sure that they are all good quality applications that were not done haphazardly. Eighth tip, it is also important to maintain recency of practice and to upgrade your skills as much as possible to increase your chances of being shortlisted for an interview. So as mentioned earlier, if you are applying for a hospital or an RMO position, then it's best to get more hospital experience, while if you're applying for a GP position, it's best to get more clinic experience. Ninth tip, make sure to study while you apply as you can get shortlisted anytime. You can study the common clinical scenarios as well as the common interview questions and try answering them in English. You can check our interview blog where we talk about our interview experience as well as the tips that we think could help other IMGs. Tip number 10. Get to know the hospitals that you are applying for. If possible, you can talk to other doctors who have worked there. You can also check the, ho the hospital's website, Facebook page, and other resources. Also, try to get to know the community that they serve and also check which hospitals could you possibly be rotating to if they're located in the rural, regional, or metropolitan areas. That's it guys! We hope you like our video and if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel as we will post more about our experiences as IMGs to Australia. Thank you for watching! Bye! Bye.